my name is Michael West, and I'm the CEO of Ajax Therapeutics and co-CEO of Biotime. In this video, I'll discuss an emerging technology called induced tissue regeneration, or ITR. In doing so, I'll be making certain forward-looking statements that have associated risks and uncertainties. I refer you to Biotime's filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission for more detailed information about the company. The largest component of the nearly $3 trillion we spend annually in the United States for healthcare relates to chronic disease, and it's easy to see why. In acute disease, such as a sore throat, that can easily be treated with antibiotics in a few days, it has very small costs compared to, say, stroke or Alzheimer's disease that can greatly impact the quality of life both for the patient as well as the family and require years, not days, of continuous care. And the greatest problem in chronic disease is that associated with aging. We're in the verge of experiencing a tidal wave of chronic degenerative diseases, problems like Parkinson's disease, osteoarthritis, heart, kidney, and liver failure, as well as many other similar long-term degenerative conditions expected to cost the United States over $1 trillion annually in coming decades. Unlike adult humans, some animals escape these problems through a remarkable capacity to simply regrow or regenerate tissues lost by trauma or degenerative disease. Even more amazing is the observation that some animals like these flatworms called planaria, if cut in half, they simply completely regenerate. The tail regrows a head, and the head regrows its tail. Because these animals have full regenerative potential, and in addition have the ability to regenerate forever through the expression of the immortalizing gene called telomerase, they actually don't age. They can die, of course, if, for instance, they're deprived of food, but they have the potential of regenerating damaged tissues in their bodies endlessly. What if such ability could be unlocked in humans? For years, scientists have studied such animals in a search for the secret of this amazing ability. Obviously, if we could tap into this power, it could have the potential to dramatically impact medicine as we know it today, as well as provide valuable insights into other phenomena like aging and cancer. Today, we announced the publication in a peer-reviewed journal called Oncotarget, the discovery of genes we believe are important in regulating this process. Because the biology had long eluded scientists, we collaborated with in silico medicine to use artificial intelligence and supercomputers to parse through millions of gene expression data points in a search for the elusive genes. We believe that the ability to regenerate is a natural process that allows the body to form at the very beginnings of life. In primitive animals, this ability is maintained throughout their life and so some of these animals simply don't age. Higher up the evolutionary ladder, however, species only show that trait when it is necessary for the body to form, and then at what is called the embryonic fetal transition, or the Weissman barrier, it is turned off. In the paper, we show an example of one such gene called COX-7A1, it's not expressed in the immortal germline or when the body is first forming, but begins to be turned on after the body is formed, playing a role, we believe, in blocking the potential to regenerate. In 2010, Biotime announced that it was possible to reverse the aging of human cells using a technology known as transcriptional reprogramming. In that work, we showed that it was possible to revert aged human cells back to the very beginnings of life, resetting the telomere clock of aging and allowing the cells to again have the potential to make cells of any kind. In the current study, we asked whether transcriptional reprogramming 
could also induce regenerative potential. Here, for instance, we can see how this gene is reset back to an embryonic regenerative state in three separate samples of skin cells taken from adult males in their 60s. Another very important discovery that we report in this paper is that cancer cells have nearly universally reverted back to an embryonic profile. It's very rare to find a change in gene expression common to nearly every type of cancer. I had the privilege of being part of a study in the mid-1990s that reported that the expression of the telomerase gene was abnormal in approximately 90% of all human cancers. In a similar way, we report in this paper that the COX-7A1 gene has reverted to an embryonic state in a vast majority of carcinomas, adenocarcinomas, and sarcomas. So how can we use these discoveries to make important new therapeutics? Is it possible to reverse the aging of human cells and in doing so, restore regenerative potential in aged human cells? We believe that it's a much simpler task to do this than it was to revert cells all the way back to the beginning of life. Since the recent financing of AJAX, we've begun to screen small molecules in a search for formulations for a drug we call ITR. We have screened over 200 such candidate formulations and believe that we have found compounds that have preliminary efficacy in the laboratory. Importantly, one such compound is already known in medicine for the treatment of a completely unrelated problem. It is known to have a great safety profile, and so we're planning on developing that compound as a first-generation product, and we call that development stage product Renalon. We filed patent applications on these discoveries for their use in regenerative medicine, cancer therapy and diagnosis, and the treatment of aging generally. We plan additional updates in the future on our product development for ITR. I'll conclude this video with an animation we produced with In Silico Medicine describing the work behind today's paper. Introducing Embryonic AI. One of the great mysteries of human life is how a human being can be formed from a single microscopic cell. The human body is composed of trillions of living cells. How does one cell and the pluripotent stem cells that follow replicate ever and over again with the cells branching out like the limbs of a tree, making all the thousands of cell types of a human being? Once the generation of a human being is complete, the cells fundamentally change. Put simply, they normally lose the ability to repeat the process of embryogenesis. Why? It is possible they turn off regenerative potential as a way of lowering the risk of cancer later in life. Whatever the reason, the consequence of blocking the potential for regeneration is that tissues scar rather than regenerate. Unlocking this embryonic regenerative power, an ability retained in some organisms that can profoundly regenerate damaged tissues, could transform medicine. People with serious injuries age-related degenerative disease, or even cancer, could potentially benefit from understanding how to reactivate this regenerative potential. Deciphering the genes behind the mechanisms of embryonic development may even unlock the ability of tissues to regenerate themselves without the use of cell transplantation. This still conceptual technology is called induced tissue regeneration, or ITR. However, after decades of research and billions of dollars in government and private funding, we are only now seeing the beginning of clinical trials of products made from embryonic stem cells or iPS cells. Years of experiments resulted in massive amounts of data from millions of experiments performed on different equipment types and with different experimental settings and deposited in many heterogeneous and often incompatible databases. There are many attempts to link and centralize access to data in these databases and resources like gene cards and life map discovery are gaining in popularity. However, to make effective use of this data in the context of embryonic stem cells, 
there needs to be a gold standard gene expression data set which can be used as a substrate to perform quality control, normalize and harmonize this data. In silico, collaborating with Biotime, one of the leaders in regenerative medicine, leveraged Biotime's heavy invest in thousands of microarray experiments of embryonic compared to fetal and adult cells, all performed on a single platform in a controlled setting. The collaboration utilized a technique called deep learning to develop a specialized artificial intelligence engine which can recognize, classify and annotate biological samples by their developmental state. This system, called Embryonic AI, is an ensemble of deep neural networks trained on thousands of carefully selected samples from biotime and from public domain and even helped identify sets of genes that can be used as markers of different embryonic and adult differentiation states. It uses resources of LifeMap and Biotime to constantly learn and improve its performance. The first version of Embryonic AI will be freely available online for scientists from all over the world to test their samples for embryonic state and signature and perform quality control of their gene expression datasets. Fueled by rapid advances in GPU computing and increases in structured data, the field of artificial intelligence is rapidly evolving. Embryonic AI system will be constantly updated with new reasoning features tested and added. In the future, this system may help develop therapeutic interventions targeting a broad range of diseases including cancer, CNS pathologies, and even loss of regenerative capacity during aging. Please visit Embryonic AI and challenge it to analyze the embryonic state of your samples.